Um, well, at this time, we're going to transition and we want to preach on our message today. In fact, our message today is an important one, and we pray that you're going to be significantly blessed by it. Our message today is called Praying Through Difficult Times. Praying Through Difficult Times. Indeed, Jeb, but these are difficult times, and it's important to pray during these times. Um, and so today, what we're going to be doing, in fact, is that we're going to be going through the Lord's Prayer. And like what you said in the beginning, what we'll be doing is that as we go through different parts of the Lord's Prayer, we'll actually be pausing so that we could pray. Now, before we do so, a question has actually come in from online, mm -hmm. and I just want to kind of put it out there so that perhaps you can share an answer mm -hmm. to it. You know, one person asked and they said, do you ever feel your prayers are not getting through? Absolutely, Kojo. I think a lot of people feel that on a regular basis because sometimes we would like for God to answer our prayers the way we think he should answer our mm, prayers. Mm, mm. And when he does not answer our prayers the way we think that he should answer our prayers, then we feel like maybe our prayers just went up to the ceiling mm -hmm. and then broom came back down. Mm -hmm. Please don't lose heart. Mm. As we talk about the Lord's Prayer, we are going to find out how God knows, how much God knows in relationship to how much we know and what we want for our own mm -hmm. journeys. Mm -hmm. So it is a call to trust the providence and the knowledge of God to say, this is what I would want. Mm. But God, let you lead in your providence. The best example I can give mm -hmm. to you about that, Kojo, is the prayer that Jesus prayed just before he was crucified. Mm. Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And the Bible tells us the agony that he was carrying was so much mm that he just wanted to give up. Mm. He just wanted to give up. And so his prayer was, if at all possible, Father, he was talking to God the Father, and he said, if at all possible, I just want this to be out of here. Mm. Let this pass from me. Mm. And then he says something which is instructive to me, mm. where he tells God, who knows all things, the end from the beginning, and knows what is best for us, mm. He says to his father, not as I will, yes. as you will. Amen. I think when we come to a place in our lives, when we trust the providence of God and mm. the promises of God mm. and the power of God, mm. my friend, yes, our prayers may not be answered the way we want them to be answered. Mm. And in the time we want them to mm. be answered, but you can be sure that God has heard your heart, mm. heard your prayer, mm -hmm. and he would give the best answer in his time. In his time. You know, that again is called faith. Mm. We trust in his leading. Mm -hmm. Maybe there will be cases, I'm sure there are some of us who have asked God for some things and God has not answered the way we want to answer. We probably have never heard him answer. I strongly believe that at some point in time, Maybe on this earth in our lifetime, mm -hmm. maybe beyond that, God will show us why he answered our prayers mm -hmm. the way he mm -hmm. answered them and not the way we wanted. Mm -hmm. And we are going to say, wow, God, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I want to say to you, my friend, please don't give up on God or give up on prayer mm -hmm. just because some prayers have not been answered mm -hmm. the way you think they should have been answered. Mm -hmm. I invite you as a child with a parent, trusting, loving parent, please come alongside with us and put your trust in God. Wow. Share your heart, but trust him to mm. answer accordingly. And you know, I, you remind me of a phrase that someone said to me one time. They said, sometimes when you can't trace God's hand, you trust God's heart. Yes. Yeah. 
Well, thank you for answering that question, Jeb. And our online audience, if there are any other questions that you have, please feel free to share them. We can't get to all of them, but throughout the course of time, if we can get to some of them, we will try in order to do so. And thank you to all those who have joined in from different places. So we're talking about praying through difficult times, all specifically right. the Lord's Prayer. And so perhaps we could take turns kind of reading it. I mean, we, we should know this all we'll by that. memory, but we'll go ahead and we'll read a little bit of it. I think mm -hmm. I, I'm glad you're doing that, Koja, because <laughs> I am sure many of you know the Lord's Prayer. I have been in environments where people recite the Lord's Prayer, mm. again, just by rote, right. tradition. Right. Right. You know, there are churches where the Lord's Prayer is prayed every week mm. regularly. Mm. But I would be bold to say so many people don't realize what Jesus was teaching his disciples so when he taught the Lord's Prayer. So, true. so, yes, please say the Lord's Prayer. But before you say it next time, you need to know what the Lord's Prayer is all, about. all about. So our first phrase says, our Father in heaven, or as some of your versions would say, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Kojo, talk to us. What could Jesus have meant when he said, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name? Yeah, that's a good point. And so let me take us there. Um, and before I do so, can I just make some quick observations yes. about the Lord's Prayer? You know, the first thing I love about the Lord's Prayer is that the Lord's Prayer is a simple prayer. You know, I, now I'm not trying to knock anybody here. You know, we're online, so I got to be careful. I'm not trying to knock anybody here. But, you know, sometimes I've been in context where, you know, some prayers are being made and they're the most decorated and flowered prayers I ever heard in my life. You know, Father, Father God who created the heavens, the earth, the seas, the creatures and all that is in them. Mm -hmm. Father God from the morning to the evening, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, all yes, of that. Yes. And here's my point. There's nothing wrong with none of that. It's okay. Matter of fact, it's great to celebrate God. But here's the thing. It's not necessary because in the Lord's prayer, he just shows a simple prayer can suffice. Something simple something meaningful, mm -hmm. something genuine. Doesn't have to be decorated, doesn't have to be embellished. It could just be something from the heart. That's the first thing I love about the Lord's Prayer. The second thing I love about the Lord's Prayer, Jebba, is that mm -hmm. interesting enough, and a lot of people don't really notice this, the Lord's Prayer is what I call a communal prayer. Yes. And let me explain what that means. Notice in the Lord's Prayer, eight times, First person plural pronouns are used. Let me explain. Yes. So notice it says in the beginning, our father who are in heaven. Doesn't say my father who are in heaven. Yes. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. It doesn't say give me this day. Our daily bread. Doesn't say my daily bread. Forgive us our debts. It doesn't say forgive me my debts. Mm -hmm. And forgive and, and lead us not into yes. temptation. It doesn't say lead me not into temptation. But and notice, and deliver us from evil. So again and again, words such as us are used versus me. Words versus our are used yes. all the time. Showing that the Lord's prayer is a communal prayer. In other words, I think what the Lord was trying to instruct is that when we pray, we shouldn't just pray with ourselves in mind. We <laughs> should pray yeah. having other people in mind. Right. Mm -hmm. And a matter of fact, I say, I think I say it, it's, in other words, when we pray, we should pray not only prayers for ourselves, but we should always approach prayer with intercession. Matter of fact, somebody said it this way. If you're praying and you're not praying for others, you're not praying right. And I said, man, that hit me hard. Wow. Because when I used to come and pray, I think about me. Yeah. Matter of fact, that's what the children's song said. It's me, it's me, oh Lord. <laughs> Standing in the need of prayer. Standing in the need. Yeah. Not my mother, not my father. It's me, oh Lord. And I'm not knocking the song, but the point I'm making here is that, yeah, it's not only you, it's others as well. Right. If you're not praying for others, you're not praying right. And so that's the, the second thing I noticed from the Lord's Prayer. The third thing I noticed from the Lord's Prayer is that the Lord's Prayer starts off with a focus on God than a focus on us. So notice the prayer again. It says, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is heaven. Three times, you know, second person uh, uh, pronouns are used. Your, yes. your, your. Then finally, in the middle of the prayer, it says, then give us this day our daily bread. So notice it's a focus on God and his purposes first, then a focus on our needs right. second. Now, this is totally opposite from the way I pray mm -hmm. because I usually pray, say, Lord, this is what I need first. 
Then at the end, watch this now, Jeff, but then I say, Lord, your will be done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then I say, Lord, your will be done. And when I really say, Lord, your will be done, what I'm really saying, God, let all my requests be what your will is, you know? Yes. And what Jesus is trying to teach us is totally different. When we come to prayer, first focus on him and his purposes, and then we focus on ourselves and our needs. I don't know if you have any comments on anything I mentioned. Absolutely. I think that is beautiful. Now that you have laid that, I think, it's time for us, Kojo, to move in mm -hmm. and get to this. Well, this is what we are going to do. Mm -hmm. I would like for us all to journey with us mm. after Kojo gives us short observations on the first two lines mm. of the prayer. Then we are going to take a minute or two to pray. Mm. We will pray and we will invite you to pray as well. Mm -hmm. And that is how we will pray our way through the Lord's Prayer. Mm. Excellent. So, Take us, go, so Joe. Take let's go us with the, the first, first one. one. You yes. said our Father who is in heaven, right? Yes. Our Father who is in heaven. Well, the first thing I notice from what Jesus is teaching us is that I always say, notice he doesn't tell us to pray our master who are in heaven. Because if we prayed our master who are in heaven, that means that we would simply approach God as a slave. Mm -hmm. Or he doesn't necessarily say pray our boss who are in heaven. Meaning that if we prayed our boss who are in heaven, we would just be approaching him as a worker or as an employee. Right. Or he doesn't even say our judge who are in heaven. If he said our judge who are in heaven, we would have been approaching him as guilty sinners, you know, standing in need of a more lenient sentence. Or he doesn't even say our king who are in heaven. God is a king, but he doesn't say address him as our king who are in heaven. Or else we would have been merely approaching him as subjects. But instead he says our father who are in heaven so that we can approach him as children dependent on a loving father. And so that's the first thing that I observe. And it's interesting to note that several times in the Old Testament, God is described as a father, but often when people pray, now not every time, but often when people pray, they didn't address God as father. Right. They usually addressed him as Lord God or something of that nature. But then when Jesus comes in the New Testament, he says, it's okay, we can now address him as father. Mm. And what I get from this is that Jesus is transitioning us to a place where we approach prayer in an intimate and a personal manner. Mm. And so that's the first thing I observe in Jesus asking us or telling us or commanding us mm. to address God as father. father. The second mm. thing I observe is Jesus gives us the location of this father. He says, our father who is in heaven. To me, by identifying God as our Father who is in heaven, what I understand from this is that Jesus is emphasizing that God is distinct and different from all fathers on earth. Amen. And to me, that's powerful because we have a lot of different type of fathers on earth. We do? Oh. <laughs> oh. Tell me. There are a lot of different type of fathers mm -hmm. on earth. And interesting enough, all those fathers don't give us the best picture. So interesting, I did some research this week. And I came to find out different fathers that we have on mm. earth. I hope this doesn't describe any of the fathers we have over here mm. listening. So one of the fathers that we have on earth is what we call absent fathers. These are fathers who choose not to be in their children's lives. Another one we call here, we call them weekend or holiday fathers. <laughs> <laughs> These are fathers uh -huh. who only have the child on the weekend or on Independence Day or Thanksgiving time. Mm. Weekend or holiday fathers. Then watch this one, Jeff. We have what we call surprise fathers. Surprise fathers are the fathers who are surprised that they have a child. <laughs> Those are surprise fathers. Mm. Then we have another father called baby daddies. You know what baby daddies are? Yeah, these are the ones mm. who can't come across to the child but have to keep paying, mm. you know, mm. monetary support for the child. Mm. Then we have what we call posthumous fathers. These are fathers who died, you know, right before their child was able to be born. Then we have good fathers, fathers that do the best for their children. But here's the, what Jesus is trying to say. Jesus is trying to say, in my, in my understanding, Jesus is trying to say that God is distinct from all of these fathers. Mm -hmm. And when we pray, we're not praying to an absent father, thank God. And we're not praying to a weekend or a holiday father. And we're not praying to a surprise father. Neither are we praying to a baby daddy. Mm -hmm. And we're not even praying to a good father. Instead, we are praying to our heavenly father. And our heavenly father is the best father, yes. a father who provides comfort, a, provi a father who provides nourishing, mm -hmm. and at the same time, a father who provides discipline. And it's beautiful that we can approach God in this way. 
And so perhaps to start off our first prayer point, we can start off with this. Maybe we can just thank God that he is our father. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that's what I want to invite you all to do at this moment. I want you to just take 30 seconds, wherever you are, and just pray and say, God, thank you so much for being our heavenly father. You're not an absent father. You're not a weekend or holiday father. Not a surprise father. You're not a baby daddy. You're not even a good father. But Lord, thank you for being the best father. And thank you for giving us the opportunity to approach you in a personal and intimate way. So we're going to actually be silent for 30 seconds so that you can. Fifteen seconds remaining. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for being such a good, good father in the words of Chris Tomlin. And we thank you so much that as our father, you have compassion for us. We thank you so much that as our father, you don't leave us as orphans. We thank you so much that as our father, you don't just show up on weekends or holidays. We thank you so much that as our father, you don't just provide us material possessions without being there with us, presence. We thank you that as our father, that you are ever present to discipline and instruct us and guide us. We thank you that as our father, you're able to hold our hands through the various storms of life. We thank you for being our father and giving us the opportunity to access you in a personal and an intimate way. Help us to always take advantage of this privilege. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, Jebba, the next thing that the verse says is that it's not only our Father, but it's our Father who is in heaven. And Jesus says, hallowed be your name. Um, and Jebba, when I was doing a lot of research on this, you know, it was very interesting because that phrase, hallowed be your name, could actually be understood in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. and what I found to be good was that I think it's actually good that it could be understood in different ways because the Lord's prayer is a model prayer, mm -hmm. which gives us so many different kinds of ways that we can pray. And so two things I found, the first I found was that how would be your name means Lord, may your name be treated as holy. Mm -hmm. When the Bible mentions God's name, it represents everything about who God is about. And so this is the first way that it can be understood. Hallowed be your name means may your name be treated as yes. holy mm -hmm. by the way we live our lives. Mm -hmm. And so that's the first um, way that this phrase could be understood. And so when we pray every morning or every evening or as we pray throughout the day, in fact, we're praying in such a way where we are asking God to help us so that we can treat his name as holy by our words, mm -hmm. by our works, by our actions. The second way that hallowed be your name is actually an address to God. And it's saying, God, make your name holy on this earth. Vindicate your name on this earth mm -hmm. by your actions, mm -hmm. by your uh, word, by your promises. And so it's actually kind of a address towards God for God to vindicate himself. And so these are two ways that that phrase, hallowed be your name, could be understood. And these are elements that we should be incorporating into our prayer. Wow. Yeah. That is that is beautiful. Mm, mm. I, I love what you're saying, Kojo. God, as we would say, is both imminent and transcendent. In other words, God is with us all the time beside us, but God is also way above us and beyond us. Mm. And that is just so beautiful. Mm. Thank you for bringing that to us and for us all to realize that both those qualities of God are always present, mm. never to forget mm. one for the other. Uh, it's beautiful. Yes. Well, I think we could use this as an opportunity to pray again, right? Absolutely. And so at this moment, we're going to give another 30 seconds to pray. And what we're going to be praying for at this moment, we're just following the Lord's prayer. What we're going to be praying for, actually, is that God will help us to live in such a way where we treat his name as holy. But secondly, that God himself will vindicate his name on this earth. And as Jebel was saying, because God is both close to us and God is uh, bigger than us. And so I'm going to pause and we're going to give it 30 seconds. And after that, uh, Jebel, in fact, if you can pray on behalf of this one, that would be great.
15 seconds remaining. Father in heaven, what an opportunity to call upon your name, your name that is so holy, that is so special and unique and not like any other name. It is set apart and we have learned so beautifully that your name will be vindicated throughout this earth, throughout this universe all the time. That is our desire. That is our cry. That even at times like these, the world would look up and to see our Father with this awesome name, a name that is above all names. And may every knee bow, every tongue confess, O oh God, mm. that you are our Father in heaven. Thank you for being that type of a father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, Jebba, there's another part to the Lord's uh, prayer. And in fact, I think that you can help us deal with that section, if that's okay. And the next part of the Lord's prayer simply says, um, your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Thank you, Kojo. I would like to tie this with the next phrase also. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does that mean? It says to me two things, Kojo. Mm. When I pray and say, Father, may your kingdom come, it is an acknowledgement mm. of the rulership of God mm. over all things, mm. that God rules over all things. You know, we hear about kingdoms on this earth. Mm. You know, and then we think, hear about empires and nations. Mm. But this kingdom, the Bible teaches us, is over all. Mm. God rules the universe. Mm. So to acknowledge when we say your kingdom come, we are saying, God, may your rulership be over all. Mm. And then Jesus brings it very personal. Mm. When he says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm. In other words... God, you rule over all things, but we are inviting you mm. to rule our world, mm. to rule our lives. Now that will be a bitter pill for some people to mercy, swallow. Mercy, mercy. You know, we want God to do all these things mm. in the world, mm. but to ask God to rule over our own lives, mm. That is a very different matter, Kojo. Very different because matter. I know about you. I think I know a little bit about you. We all have this thing called willpower. Yes, yes. Have you heard of the strong-willed people? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. You and I are strong-willed mm -hmm, people. Mm -hmm. Very strong. So in other words, let me put it this way for you, our friends. If you can picture with us, each one of us in our hearts, as the Bible would say, or in our minds, is a throne, mm. a majestic, lofty throne. Mm. And every human being's throne in the heart has someone seated on it. Mm. So for a lot of people, I'm sure you know, for them on the throne of their hearts, it is they who sit. Mm. I am king of mm. my life. Mm. I am in charge. I will do these things. Look at what my government is doing. I, 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 a mm. lot of eyes. For some people on the throne of their hearts, it is their spouses. Mm. Oh. That ain't me though. Uh, that's not yeah, you okay, because right. you're not there yet. <laughs> so it's like, well, if my husband says, mm. if mm. my wife says, mm. for some of us, it is the significant other. Mm. For some of us, it is our wealth. Mm. For some of us, it is our accomplishments. Mm. Something takes over and is in charge of our lives, mm. the throne of our hearts. Mm. The Lord's prayer simply says, when I say, Lord, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Jesus is saying, I need to come to the place where I say, God, in my life, 
may your will be done. Mm. What you know is best for mm. me. You know, going back again to what the question we answered earlier, Kojo, is coming to a place where we are saying, Lord, you are wiser. Mm. You are more caring than all others. Mm. You know the end from the beginning. You want what is best for us. Mm. And you know that you can take care of us at the time that you have set for mm. us. So I am coming to a place where I am willing to surrender myself, mm. my will to you. Mm. And that, my friend, is not easy for anybody. Mm -hmm. Because every day, I have to bring my will into submission to the will of God. So true. Because I think I know it. Mm. I know this about this situation. I know about those people. Mm. I know what to do in this mm. country. But it calls me to a place to say, God, I want to trust you. That's so powerful because that's essentially what Jesus prayed at the Garden of Gethsemane. And so he even modeled it for us. Yes. He said, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I'll never forget what a preacher said one time. He said, one of the highest indicators of spirituality is willingness. Wow. Willingness. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what I would like for us all to do now, I would like for us to pray. I want us to pray for two things. Mm. I would like for us to ask God to help us to trust his wisdom mm. and trust his love. Mm. And secondly, equally and sometimes harder part is, I would like for us to ask God to rule in our hearts mm. that he be the king of our hearts mm. and nobody else. Okay. So if you can join us next 30 seconds, we pray and then I will finish the second. Okay, the put 30 seconds on the clock. All right, let's All right. pray. Fifteen seconds remaining. We're praying for God to be the ruler of our hearts. Oh, Father in heaven, so many times our prayers seem to go unanswered, and we wonder if something is wrong with us or if you're not listening. That is our human tendency. But your prayer teaches us, Father, that we can trust your wisdom mm. and your love. Mm. Because your wisdom is way beyond all our wisdom put together. The wisdom that is available on Google, Lord, is probably a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction mm. of the wisdom you have. Mm. And the love you have for us, it is incredible and it is awesome. So, Lord, our Father, help us to trust your wisdom and your love. And because we trust your wisdom and your love, we want you to be ruler in our hearts, mm. in our minds, in our lives, every aspect. Oh God, when we invite you to have your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven, we want to start with us. Mm. May you take full control of us, God. Mm. May we learn the art of submission and surrender to you. Mm. And may you rule us. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, that's wow. wonderful. That's wonderful. Now, well, we want to keep moving mm. to the next segment of our prayer. Mm. Kojo, you are going to lead us in that. Jesus taught us to pray, give us this day our daily bread. What do you think Jesus might have meant by that? Give us this day our daily bread. Well, to me, uh, it's very simple. You know, bread is simply a metaphor for all of our basic necessities in life. You know, when the Bible says, give us this day our daily bread, another way that it could be understood is give us this day our daily food. And our daily food simply is a bigger metaphor for our basic necessities. And so 
that prayer, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. It's a request towards God that God will provide us all of the things we need to make it throughout the day. Mm -hmm. It's not just physical needs. It's physical needs. It's emotional needs. It's spiritual needs. It's mental needs. It's social needs. But going a little bit deeper into the original language, mm -hmm. it gets a little bit sharper. And what Jesus is really trying to say mm -hmm. when we pray that prayer is that we are to pray for the bread that meets the unique demands of the coming day. Now that's the part I like mm -hmm. because every day has its own demands. Yes. You know, some days you need a little bit more patience. Come on, Jeva, let's, let's, let's get real. You know, some days you need a little bit more wisdom. Mm -hmm. Some days you need a little bit of courage. Some days you need a little extra dosage of humility. Some days you need a little bit more God confidence. Mm -hmm. Some days you need a little bit more money. Hello, somebody. Some days you just need a little bit more friends. Yes. Some days, I, I think I'm making my point over here. Mm -hmm. And the point is that when we pray, let us pray asking God to meet the unique demands of the coming day. The, the next thing I love from this prayer is that it's a challenge to us to take each, take our lives one day at a time. Yes, yes. Instead of trying to fret and worry about what's, now of course, you know, I like how somebody said it one time, make your plans, but make them in wet concrete. You know, in other words, you're trying to say, be flexible to God's leading, yes, right? Yes. But the idea is that instead of worrying and fretting about what's gonna happen five years from now, 10 years from now, forget it. Let's even talk about this coronavirus. Instead of worrying about what's gonna happen in May, June, July, August, mm -hmm. instead, you know, because the first and foremost is that you can't even change a single thing by worrying about, you know, what's gonna come in the next few months. And so this prayer is trying to get us to focus to taking, each, taking our lives each day at a time, which is a direct cure for issues such as anxiety, stress, and unnecessary and excessive worrying in our lives. And so this is the direction that Jesus is going in when he says, give us this day the bread that meets the unique demands of the coming day. Wow. Well, what do you think, friends? Are we asking God each day to give us what we need to meet the unique demands that we are facing that day? Or are we worrying? You know, Jesus says somewhere else in the same Sermon on the Mount, Kojo, latter part, Matthew 6, 31 to 33, he says, why are you worrying? Mm. Look at the birds, mm. look at the flowers. Mm. God takes care of them. Mm. But seek first God's kingdom mm. and his righteousness and all these things mm. will be taken care of for yes, you. Sir. So when we ask God to give us this day our daily bread, that is what we are asking for. So I think you need to pray for that yeah. in a very special way. Let's do that at this moment. And so at this moment, wherever you are, we told you this is a different kind of service. We're conversing about the sermon, I'm mean, sorry, the sermon about the Lord's prayer. And as we go through it, we are taking our time to also pray as well. And so at this moment, as Jebba has just articulated, what are some of the needs that you need for the coming day? Mm -hmm. Think about those. And in 30 seconds, let's pray. Fifteen seconds remaining. Father, we have so many needs every day in our lives. We have physical needs. Some people are struggling right now. They have no food. They have no money due to the crisis. Some people are struggling right now with other type of physical needs, health. They're struggling with those. And I pray that you provide their daily bread. There are others who are struggling with emotional needs. They're lonely. They're upset. They're annoyed. They're angry. They're frustrated. They're hurt. I pray that you'll be able to meet those emotional needs. Give them their daily bread. There are some who are struggling with spiritual needs. They're racketing with doubts about you. They have spiritual needs for forgiveness from sin, from guilt. And Father, I pray that you give them their daily bread. And Lord, we trust that you're able to do this and we'll give you praise and glory as you continually do. So help us take each day, one day at a time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 
Well, Jeppa, we're getting towards the close of the Lord's Prayer, and um, there's a little bit more to the Lord's Prayer. And so it says, give us this day our daily bread, but then there's a big part. And this is the part that honestly people don't like because people uh. don't like the F word. You know, uh. <laughs> people don't like the F word, but we have to talk about the F word. He says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Uh. Work on that for us, Jeppa. Well, you know, the story is told about Robert Louis Stevenson. Mm. He was in prayer with his family in the South Sea Islands. And as they said the Lord's Prayer, and they came to this part, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. He got up off his knees and is told his wife, I'm not praying. And she asked him, what happened? Something wrong? And he said, no, I cannot pray. Because God is saying, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Mm. Wow, wow, wow. How about you? Now, I'm sure you have heard the Lord's Prayer in a slightly different way as well. Some pray, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Some versions say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass from us. Mm. What is the difference? Mm. Let me explain. Both are fairly close. But the translation that says, give us, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors is a lot closer to the original. So what does it mean to have a debt? I'm sure many of us, if you're students, you have a debt. If you have a house nice. and you have a mortgage, you have a debt. Mm. If you just bought a new car, Kojo, mm. you have a debt. Mm. When you get married, Kojo, you'll be in a lot of debt. <laughs> what don't, don't tell my what like is that. a debt? <laughs> a debt is something I owe somebody. Mm. So for example, if I have a severe need, Kojo, mm. and I come to you and I say, Kojo, would you loan me $1,000? Mm. And you loan me $1,000, I I am in debt to you. Mm -hmm. I am indebted to you. Mm -hmm. So when the Bible says, forgive us our debts, what do I owe God? Mm. Am I indebted to God? Mm. Think about it. God has brought me into this world. He has kept me alive. Mm. My heart keeps beating. Mm. I'm breathing free air. Mm. And I'm blessed with so many things in life and for my life to run smoothly, God has also given me a set of guidelines, commandments. Mm. When I realize all of these, I realize I am truly indebted to God. Mm. I owe him my very existence. Mm. And when I go in the wrong direction, then I realize that I am moving in an area where God does not want me to go to. That takes me to the next word, mm. trespass. Mm. Okay. Have you ever been walking down the street and you see a sign that says no trespassing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No trespassing simply means this property is not yours. It is not right for you to go there. Mm. Stay away from it. Mm. So when we say, God, forgive us our trespasses, mm. are there things which we have done, said, thought, which we were not supposed to because God did not want us to do those. Mm. Yes, we have truly gone away from what God has wanted us to do, mm -hmm. which is why we say, God, forgive us our trespasses or forgive us our debts. And when we say forgive us, we're saying everybody, mm -hmm. meaning all of us mm -hmm. on planet Earth are sinners. Mm -hmm. We are all indebted to God. And then God says, forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. Mm. I dare say I'm talking to some people who probably know people who have done you terrible harm. Mm. They have done the most horrendous things to you. Mm. Your life has been altered because of what someone did to you. And you might be thinking, I might be thinking, I am never ever going to forgive you. Mm. And you have every reason to say that until 
until we come to God mm -hmm. who has forgiven us so beautifully, mm. who has extended his grace to us. Mm. And what I'm saying is, Kojo, I might have done something horrible, horrible to you. Mm -hmm. And you say, I'm not going to forgive you. But then when you put yourself at the cross of Jesus, Amen. and you realize how much God has forgiven you, Amen. you say, I am going to forgive. I'm going to mm. extend grace to this person, mm. even though they did this, mm. because God has extended grace to mm. me. And so it is saying, God, I want you to be in charge. Mm -hmm. Forgive my sins. And I will do the same for the others who did something to me likewise. Mm -hmm. So are you there, my friend? We invite you to join us. Please don't get up and walk away. We want us all to ask God to forgive us, just like we say to God, Help me, God, to forgive so-and-so. Forgive so-and-so, just like you have forgiven me. Mm. It's hard. Mm. Somebody's fighting you right now, Jebba. They're saying, I don't want to forgive. But I think this is an important thing that the Lord instructs us to do. So 30 seconds on the clock, and then um, one of us will pray. Fifteen seconds remaining. We're asking God to forgive us our debts. It's a prayer of confession and give us strength to forgive others. Lord, there are only two people who know the extent of our sins. One is us personally, and the other one is you. How much we owe you how much we owe you. We can never pay you back. Never, never. Not in a thousand lifetimes. Mm. That is why we ask for your forgiveness. Thank you for being an incredibly gracious God. Thank you for our Lord Jesus, who shed his blood on the cross of Calvary, mm. so that all our sins, even the most heinous sins, and the daily sins, we commit against you can be forgiven. And because you extend so much grace to us, O oh Savior, we pray that you would help us to extend grace to everybody who has hurt us. There are people who have been hurt in the most horrible fashion. Oh God, it is hard. It is hard. You know that, and we recognize that. But when we have been forgiven by you, in that freedom, we can forgive others and move on with our lives. I pray that none of us will be stuck in some point in our lives because we refuse to forgive. So please, give us the heart, give us the magnanimity, give us the grace like Jesus to forgive others. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow. Well, Kojo, that was a hard part. Mm. But then we are coming to the next phrase mm. in the Lord's Prayer, which is so very important for us mm -hmm. every moment of every mm -hmm. day. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Man, what a, what a phrase. Please, please take us. With well, let's, let's deal with the first phrase. Yes. Lead us. That prayer, lead us, is a prayer for guidance. It's straight up simple. Now it's interesting because in America here, we talk a lot about a declaration of independence, right? That was signed in, ooh, let me get my dates right, 1776. Yes. Okay, I think I got that right. Take me back to history class. So we signed our declaration of independence, but interesting enough, and watch this, take this to the bank. What the Lord is trying to teach us in the Lord's prayer is that in the Lord's prayer, we're not signing a declaration of independence, we're signing a declaration of dependence. Amen. And it's interesting because we spend our whole lives trying to become independent. That's why we get better education. That's why we put mentors around us. That's why we do, that's why we get better jobs so that we can become more independent and lead ourselves. 
But in prayer, what we're essentially doing is that we are renouncing all of those things and giving it back to God and saying, God, I don't trust my education. I don't trust my expertise. I don't trust my tradition. I don't trust my culture. I want to trust you and the way you are going to lead me. So first and foremost, this prayer and lead us is a prayer of guidance. And more importantly, it's a declaration of dependence. Amen. Then he says, and lead us not into temptation. Interesting enough, this is the first negation within the entire Lord's prayer. Yes. And that phrase, lead us not into temptation, has baffled the minds of so many people for years. Now, here are some suggestions that I'm coming up with as to what this may mean. And let me bring it back so that you can see the rest of us. And so first, this may mean, lead us not into temptation can mean, number one, Lord, when we get into temptation, give us the strength not to fall, right? It's kind of like what Jesus told his disciples to pray. Pray that you don't fall when you get into temptation. That's the first thing that lead us not into temptation can mean. Another thing that lead us not into temptation can mean, it's kind of like what Jesus said to Peter. He said, Simon Peter, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. Lead us not into temptation can also mean that God give us the strength so that while we're in temptation, we will also maintain faith and trust in you. That's also another thing that it can mean. Interesting, I love that story between Peter and Jesus because in that story, Jesus said, Satan I'm trying, is trying to sift you, but Jesus says, but I have prayed for you. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. In many other religions, it is the humans that pray to God. It is only in the Christian religion where God prays for us. Amen. Jesus says, but I have prayed for you. Mm -hmm. Then that phrase, lead us not into temptation, can also mean, Lord, lead us so we don't unnecessarily expose ourselves to temptation. Yes. That's also another thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing is that we can also unnecessarily place ourselves in temptation's way by going to see certain movies, by playing certain songs, by talking to a certain someone at a certain time of the day, mm -hmm. by going to a certain bar where we know we had a drinking problem. But you know, I can keep compounding yes, examples. Yes. So sometimes we could put ourselves unnecessarily in temptation's way. And so the prayer is, Lord, lead us not into temptation. Amen. Interesting enough, let's keep working with that word temptation. The word temptation, Periosmos can also mean trials, like a difficulty that you're going through. So the prayer could also be, Lord, lead us not into unnecessary difficulties. I am a firm believer that we should not bring upon ourselves unnecessary difficulties. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, God uses trials in order to grow us and to shape us. But I always say, let God bring the trial. Don't go out looking for the trial. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't go out looking for the trial. And lead us yes. not into temptation. Lead us not into trial. Or that phrase, and, and this is my point I'm trying to make with the Lord's Prayer. It gives us so many rooms to understand it so that it can give us all kinds of prayers. Yes. And so lead us not into temptation, meaning lead us not into trials, can also mean, Lord, when we get into the trial, lead us so that the trial is not more than we can bear. It can also mean that as well. And so there are so many different things. The key point is this. That prayer, lead us not into temptation, is a prayer for God's guidance, a declaration of dependence. Yeah. But then that phrase, lead us not into temptation, but then there's the second half, but deliver us from the evil one. That's, you know, the technical phrase, from the evil one. And we know who the evil one mm -hmm. is. And I love that phrase, the evil one, because sometimes we think our boss is the evil one. Oh or sometimes, you know, you married folks think your spouse is the evil one. You know, I can separate myself from you there. Ah. <laughs> uh. Or, you know, sometimes we feel like our friends are the evil one. Or sometimes we feel like the church are the evil ones. But what we must understand, and I love Jesus' prayer, is that Jesus' prayer helps us to focus on the spiritual realities. That there are forces that operate behind these proxies. And that's where the fight needs to take place. And what Jesus is saying is that that prayer is a prayer for protection. Deliver us from the evil is a prayer for protection. And I truly believe that when we ask God to deliver us, he surely will. He will deliver, you know, the devil has so many schemes to try and take us down each and every single day. But for every one fallen angel that tries to destroy you, mm -hmm. he has two guardian angels Amen. there to fight mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what I wanna share with each and every one of us today. And so perhaps at this moment, we can pray for those two things, yes. for guidance and for deliverance. Let's bow our heads and let's give 30 seconds to worship. Fifteen seconds remaining. We're praying for protection. Deliver us from the evil one and from guidance. Lead us not into temptation. Dear Lord, lead us not into temptation. Lead us so that we don't unnecessarily expose ourselves to temptation. Lead us so that if we do fall in temptation, that we do end up in temptation, we don't fall. Lead us so that our faith remains strong in temptation. Lead us. But Lord, also protect us. The evil one is trying to do many things to destroy us. But Lord Jesus, we pray that you will serve as a hedge around us to protect us from any of his attacks to bring us down. And we know that even any arrows that come our way, you have already judged it. You've already weighed it. You've already measured it. And you've already provided an escape route for us. We thank you for delivering us from all evil. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. In fact, one last thing came to my mm -hmm. mind. Deliver us from evil is also an ultimate reference to delivering us from all the evil in this world. Amen. It's a prayer for the coming of the Lord mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That Lord Jesus come yes. so that you can wipe away evil mm -hmm. completely. Jebba, there's yeah. a final piece to the Lord's prayer. Man, we're, we're so good. We're right on time. You know, we've yeah. hit it right on time. I, I feel so proud of myself. You know, I usually go over time. And so um, I think I'm sitting next to you. That's you what's keeping me on time. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there's the final piece to the Lord's prayer. Interesting enough, they say that this piece to the Lord's prayer is not often found in the earlier manuscripts, but then it's found later on. And so can you talk to us a little bit about this final piece of the Lord's prayer? Yes. The final phrase of the Lord's Prayer says, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Kingdom, power, and glory. This is bringing the entire prayer to its culmination. A final acknowledgement, yours is the kingdom. We started this prayer by talking about the kingdom of mm, God. Mm. So when we finish this prayer, we are saying, God, you are, you are sovereign. You are ruler over all. You are ruler over my own life. Mm. Yours is the power. The power that you have is unrivaled, unmatched. There's no way I can even fathom the mm. power you have. Mm. That is who you are. Mm. And glory, mm. glory, all the things that make for your nature, your goodness, mm. your power, mm. your righteousness, your authority, all of those give you and you alone glory. Mm. And therefore, the prayer says, as I finish this prayer, Father, mm. I am making sure that you receive all the power, mm. all the glory, mm. and the whole kingdom mm. of your universe belongs to you. Mm. So we would like to pray now, and we would like to say, God, you are, you are awesome. Mm. You are in charge of my life, mm. and you are worthy of all my praise. Mm. That is a beautiful way. You know, we start out with exalting God mm -hmm. and we close again with exalting mm -hmm. God. And that is what we invite you to do with mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So 30 seconds, quiet time mm -hmm. for you to pray. Mm -hmm. And then I will pray. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Let's do 30 seconds on the clock. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Fifteen seconds remaining. 
Let us pray this doxology. Lord Jesus, thank you for teaching us this magnificent prayer that exalts you above and beyond all earthly powers. God, we acknowledge that you are king over us. You are. We acknowledge that all power belongs to you. Mm. And so you are in charge of our lives. We acknowledge that glory belongs to you and you alone. So you are worthy of our praise. And we even said forever, you had all these before, you have all these now, and you alone will have all these forever and ever. And we thank you for that. And we pray that that will be the case in our lives personally. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.